the Winter and Christmas STEM challenges. This week we are doing Sleigh and Slope, or Sled and Slope if you prefer the winter version. I'm going to be using Sleigh and Sled interchangeably for the rest of the video. In this one, the students design a combo ramp and sled designed to keep the cargo inside and the sled to go the maximum distance. So for Sleigh and Slope, we're going to play up the Christmas angle, pretending that it's Santa's sleigh and that we're trying to keep the gifts inside. The gifts can be symbolized by either little bows or little ornaments, and I will say that these tubes of 15 ornaments I just got um, this weekend at Dollar Tree, so it's a good deal. If you don't want to use the Christmas version, then just call it Sled and Slope, and instead of keeping gifts inside, we are going to keep riders inside. Before I get too far ahead of myself, let's check out the other materials and the STEM Challenge Cycle. And just so you know, I did just have a new video made for the STEM Challenge Cycle. It's a little more descriptive than the one I had before, so make sure you click on the pop-in link when it comes in. This is the STEM Challenge Cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a pop-in card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. For a lot of challenges, having cardboard scraps is really helpful. This one, obviously, it's pretty important. So I love using uh, cereal boxes and Kleenex boxes because the cardboard is firm enough, but it's also easy enough for the students to cut. Some things to think about before you start the challenge will be where the students build. Now, I would recommend having them build on the actual floor of the classroom. Um, the reason is, if you're on the edge of the desk, as I am, if your sleigh is actually uh, a pretty good design, it's going to fall off of the edge of the desk. Which brings me to the next thing you need to think about. Will you allow the students to connect their ramps to the desk in any way? Even if it's on the ground, they might want to prop it off of uh, the table leg, and you just need to decide if that's okay with you or not. If it's not, you need to put it in the constraints that it has to be a standalone ramp, that it cannot be um, leaning against a wall or a desk. Now, another thing to think about, because the cargo has to stay inside, the students might want to build it as an enclosed sled. And if you don't want them to do that, then you need to have a constraint that says something like has to be an open air vehicle um, or it can never um, turn end over end um, so that, you know, maybe they would think of making a sphere. I usually start with a criterion of containing two gifts or two riders, but it might be an interesting thing to do rather than giving them the two bows or the two ornaments. Uh, is to have a variety of options and let them choose what they like, candy canes, um, bows, ornaments, whatever, and to allow them to choose whatever amount they want as long as they have at least two. And what that's going to do is it's going to change the mass of the sled and that then in turn should impact their design and how far the sled will travel. And the same thing would apply to riders. The more riders, the more mass it should make some sort of a difference. But you might want to be keeping it a little bit more simple and not introduce too many more variables. That's up to you and of course the age group of your students. Another thing that I've seen teachers do before is to actually make the ramp for the students and all the students use the same ramp. I'm not really a fan of that idea, but I understand there would be cases where it's appropriate. However, you miss a lot of options and variables here in terms of the height, the length of the ramp, um, and the angle of the ramp and it gives students uh, a lot of different variables to test and to try out. So I don't like the idea of taking that away. The way that students are gonna measure is from the beginning of the sled before the release and after. Students are not allowed to push the sled down the hill. It is a constraint that they can release it, but they cannot push. I need to note before they release the sled, where is the starting point? Where is the furthest out point of the sled? And then once the sled stops, they need to measure it, and that will be their total distance. So I think I've just demonstrated why it's important to build on the ground or a very long table. When I'm having students measure, if the cargo falls out of the sled, it's an invalid trial. You can have students either record their final result as their best achieved distance or as an average of the valid trial distances. Now, I always have students sketch their final designs and where it's age appropriate, I would have them label the length of the ramp, the height of the ramp, and the angle of the ramp. If you're looking to make this just a little bit more challenging, you can increase the amount of gifts or riders that have to remain in the sled. You can add a weather resistant criterion, and um, a couple of ideas for that would be to expose the sled to very strong winds that are oncoming winds. 
um, and that will force the students to think about the aerodynamics of their sled as well as making sure if they have light materials inside that they're somehow secured inside. You can also um, introduce some rain with a spray bottle and require that those gifts of riders may remain dry. And another way to increase difficulty is by the extension activities that you choose. So let's talk about some of those. So there are a lot of variables at play here. We have the materials used for the sled and the slope. We have the height, length, and angle of the ramp. We have the surface area of the sled. Um, friction, of course, is at play here. You can have students choose and isolate a variable to test and create an experiment or investigation around it. For younger students, they could study simple machines, especially ramps. And you could explore forces, friction, potential and kinetic energy. There are a lot of extension opportunities here. So now you have all the basics, but of course there's always more. Check out the resource. Don't waste time recreating the wheel. This resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the hard parts are done. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the sleigh and slope materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find two versions of editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions in color in black and white, four-page expanded room for response for younger students, and two-page condensed space paper saver version. A sled and slope set of handouts is provided if you need or prefer a winter non-Christmas version of the challenge. You'll also get a data recording sheet and a set of group discussion questions. In the extension templates, you'll find a set of handouts for students to design their own reducing friction experiment with sample answer key. You'll also find math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted winter Christmas and mega STEM challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be back next week with Snowman Stretch. You don't want to miss it. See you next time.